Hi there guys and welcome back to another FPV Guide video. As you know, this week I'm hanging out here at Inner Drone 2017 and right now I'm with Jonathan from Ascent Drones. And you might have seen them last year or the year before. The year before. The year before. I was one of the people sending them spam saying, please, 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 can I get to touch this and play with it? And what you guys have made is a flying, no, I'm not gonna call it that, but you have made a counter-rotating flying drone that essentially does what my regular Phantom does. Right, that's right. It's a, it's a coaxial drone, so it uses two co-rotating uh, rotors, or counter-rotating rotors. Um, to let's, let's see this baby. So this is our Generation 2 product. Um, it's intended for industrial applications, uh, military, public safety. Um, the, the basic value is it's highly durable, it's highly compact, and it's also modular, so we can put on different payloads onto the bottom. So, uh, and and, and the, what's cool about this, over on the table here, you've got thermal cameras, there's a GoPro gimbal, and there is what I immediately go, hey, wait, I've got one of these. This is an X3 from a, an Inspire 1. So, can we stick that on there? Yeah, absolutely. Can I hand you this? Oh, cool. And this is a spherical camera. It's 360 degree, probably for surveillance. Yep, exactly. And it goes on, and I heard a click. Yep. And it's hard to see way down here. So, here you have it basically, and then you have a carbon fiber crash protector here. But you're able to have, you can do the full range of motion up and down to vert to straight down. And you can do the usual, it's out, all the way out. So you have both directions here. And then you've got antennas down here, probably for the video down. Yep, that's right. So all of that part is in the camera module. That's right. And then up here, you have the the other part we have here then is a battery. Yes, that's correct. Let me hold it this yeah, for sure. a second. So I'm gonna take this part. Do you mind? Go for it. So we're twisting. Yep. I'm not dropping anything. Except for it's carbon fiber, it probably takes a pretty good drop. Yep. Up here, if I'm twisting, and here's the battery. So we can have several of these in a backpack. And this is the aircraft. Yep, that's right. That's the core of the vehicle right there. And that's basically our business. Uh, we're at airframe manufacturers. So this is the core. We make this. We would also make the batteries. And we would look for uh, technology partners to team up with to provide the uh, various payloads. And so to put this one back in, red yep. to red. Red to red. And you just give it a half twist. In and twist. There you go. And now they had a multi plug up here. And I recognize the same multi plug down here. That's right. So we have a wire harness that goes the length of the vehicle. And so that would allow any um, payload that it, you mount to the top of the vehicle to communicate with the bottom. Basically, nothing is isolated. Everything can talk to each so, other. So it's not that there's only one camera port. It goes, it, all of them yes, leads correct. travel through the entire. Yep. Could you fly multiple batteries? Uh, yeah, you can stack the batteries, or you can do multiple payloads. So how long does this fly as it is here? Uh, about 30 minutes. So 30 minutes with, uh, uh, I believe it's 500 grams payload. So that would be like the X5 Yeah, essentially. exactly, exactly. And now, so let's put this one back on. So red to red goes right in here, and basically if you can't put it in wrong. Right. Wait for the click. It has this thing here, and first I was like, well, that's cool. They actually show a video, you crash land this thing. That's how you land. Yeah, exactly. So, so you come down on the landing heel. The accelerometers detect the basically the bounce or the strike. The uh, uh, motors break and power down. And in the production units, the blades are actually spring-loaded. This is just a demonstration unit. So these would, yeah, they'd retract along the side. And it just rolls it on, side on the side and, and, and pick it up. Yep, exactly. The video of this thing crash landing, the official way of landing, it's really cool. It comes down, it just hits, and it goes boom, and there it is. No, nothing spinning. So that instant break is pretty impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Or you can also just hand catch out of the air too. Yeah, I saw the video. Jonathan is just basically reaching up and taking it because you've got a lot of stuff to grab. Yeah, exactly. Exactly so, right. So how do you fly it? Orientation mode or intelligent orientation? So actually, it would depend with uh, the end user how they would want to use it. If you were going to be doing like autonomous waypoints or something like that, it wouldn't really matter. But if you were to do a manual mode, uh, yeah, it would be sort of self-orientating. Right. Uh, the other part of it is, I, you know, I've flown these crafts enough that I'm really used to seeing them in the air. It doesn't really bother me that much, so I can fly in more of a traditional, you know, FPV or just. Uh, uh, you know, regular RC mode. Well, I mean, and one of the things we were trying to teach people in the beginning when they were learning to fly for video, sure. were if you just give it a little bit of stick, see what direction they move, then you know what orientation That's exactly what I do. Yeah, so, you can tell right away because, you know, it, it does a soft lean in the direction that it's traveling, so you give it a quick you know lean what and you know right away. Yep, exactly. So it's like, 
an experienced pilot shouldn't really have problems flying. Yeah, right, exactly. But, and if you're flying FPV, it wouldn't matter either way, too, because you'd be seen right up to the front, right? You've been flying these things with FPV cameras? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, the Generation 1. Yep. You, guys, you know we need to get hold of an FPV flying dildo kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is too you're not cool. not the only one making that. Yeah, that was good. I mean, but this is cool. And, and, and really, the space here, because one of the things when we talk to police, is they don't have room for a big square Pelican case in a cruiser. Yeah, exactly. But when this is folded down, you can find find ro room for rolled up blanket. Yeah, exactly. Now you can fit multiple in a backpack, and that's really the a lot of the value of this, the compactness, yep, the, the durability, and just the ability to have a very small footprint and still have a large blade area. So if you need to search, you could do a swarm of these and run them from a laptop? Yeah, absolutely. We were talking to somebody earlier who wanted to deploy swarms from a plane to cover a, a network of if they were doing a search and rescue mission. So you basically have to pull them out this way and then spin up and reorient. Yeah, exactly. They'd be launched from a pylon. Another advantage, actually, of the, of the shape is that it can fit in just sort of a tube a very aerodynamic structure. So you drop them out, let them tumble for a while, and then they they turn on, and away you go. Stuff tossed out of the airplane that turns itself on and then start flying. I mean, this is just so cool. I like this guy. This is why we like working with drones. Yeah, absolutely. But so so here comes the difficult question. Sure. The one we hate asking. Yeah. So four hundred dollars? No, not quite. So um, this is still in development, so we don't have a, a price nailed down. The core of the vehicle is probably around four thousand dollars. And then uh, everything else after that is going to be a la carte, so whatever the sensors are and the ground control station. What kind of payload can we fly on this thing? So it can go up to a kilogram. What, so that means I could put my X5 sensor on Yeah, it. I think you could. And because that's really, I want to be able to fly a serious camera for right. my needs. Sure, sure. But you can also, I know you have the flare, yep. flare sensor on there, so you can fly to the rescue, you can do thermal imaging, and you can do agricultural work. Yes, absolutely. Jonathan, thank you so much. Thank you when very do you much. I think we're going to see these. Uh, about this time next year. This so we have a working year. prototype. This is the, as I mentioned, the development sort of conceptual model. Um, but we will be yeah, putting into production in the next few months and get everything ironed out. And this time next year, uh, these should be available. We'll be back and we'll be flying one of these and having a lot of fun, guys. So thank you for watching. Make sure you click down in the corner of the screen. I guess it's on this side. I can never figure that out. Click to subscribe. We've got more videos coming up from Inner Drone 2017. And that was Jonathan from Ascent Drones. Ascent, Ascent, Ascent Aero, Aero Systems. Systems. Close enough. So, these names are so long. I need a cheat card on my yeah, camera. Yeah, there you go. <laughs>